Good. All right. It looks like we're live now. Um, greetings, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Um, today is a, a little bit different of a show that I have done here on this platform. Um, as many of you guys know, I'm a teacher. And um, the world has been facing a pandemic, uh, the coronavirus. And it has a lot of people... Um, asking questions, a lot of people feeling nervous. You even have some young people thinking that it's not a big deal. One thing I, we can all agree on, it's a pretty big deal. Such a big deal that teachers are, in many school districts around the nation, will be teaching from home and students will be learning from home. And this has students on edge, parents on edge, teachers on edge, admin on edge, all the way up to the top of school districts. And rightfully so. This is something that um, if, as far as I know, in my limited time, teaching has never been done in school districts. And uh, some of us may feel like we're unprepared to do this or handle what's about to come for the next couple of weeks, maybe next couple of months. And uh, we wanted to do this for you guys, to put you guys at ease, to show you that it may not be easy, but it will be possible working together, and each other out going forward. And I invited a couple of people to join uh, me in the panel. Uh, to, uh, I'm not sure if she's to my right or to my left, but sharing the top row with me is Caitlin. Caitlin is actually from Class Dojo. She will be doing most of the talking today, getting us um, accustomed to the concept of remote learning. Uh, right below me is Mr. Chris Guadalupe. He is our tech, uh, tech geek, tech expert at PS78, where we both are um, educators. And to the bottom, uh, side of me is Tanisha Franks, who is um, active in our community, uh, a, a longtime educator, and a member of the UFT. Now, we know that um, uh, a lot of teachers are concerned. This is not going to be um, a stream where we are venting our frustrations. We are looking for answers and positively moving forward in this. So we appreciate that some people are frustrated and may have concerns. And at any other time, if you want to hit me in the inbox, I'll be more than happy to engage in conversation to help you if I can. But today we're about we're all about getting ourselves mentally ready and prepared for remote learning starting Monday, or if you guys have started it already, uh, going forward. All right. So let me introduce you to uh, Caitlin, who is with us today from Class Dojo. Hey friends, um, my name's Caitlin. I currently work at Class Dojo, but I taught second grade and fourth grade. Um, and I know what it's like to really miss your kiddos um, going from teaching and then working remotely is actually how I work. Um, so I very much get your feelings right now. Um, and I have to really like commend everyone for taking this whole task on. You know, so many people were going from thinking about, you know, their last day of school and all these things and suddenly being like, okay, we're remote, remote teaching or remote learning and the grace with which teachers are actually moving forward and finding solutions and sharing and just doing so much is amazing. And it's truly amazing to see how teachers are working together to actually do this, to, to transition to a remote learning community. There go my headphones. It's not going to be the first time. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share with you a few things um, to hopefully help you wrap your brain around remote teaching. Um, I did a webinar earlier today for teachers, which we will be posting to our YouTube if you'd like to hear about things more in depth. Um, if there's something that you know, I didn't touch on that you really want to hear if you're a parent and you really want to see the parent side, if you're a teacher and you really want to hear something specifically around portfolios, um, let me know. Um, we created a website. Let me first figure out how I can present my screen because I feel like that's going to be my biggest challenge right now. Oh, presenter mm -hmm. mode. There we go. Mm -hmm. Share yeah. screen. Just, real quick. Um, uh, Chris Guadalupe has a lot of resources also that he, he knows awesome. uh, a lot about. So um, if any parents and uh, teachers have any questions about that, um, you can ask Chris as well as um, Tanisha. I think we just lost um, Caitlin, but she will be back uh, hopefully soon. She's got to come back to become a presenter. Um, but, um, oh, here she is. There she is. So there, can you see me? Hopefully this works. Um, let's see. Oh, she 
gets ready. Um, in our school, we spent the past three days preparing our teachers, paraprofessionals, and admin on remote learning. And uh, in our school, there's a lot of confusion. And I, I'm not going to say that confusion is bad because whenever you do something for the first time or you've never done something before, um, confusion is not a bad thing. But it's important for us to get over the confusion by educating ourselves so that we are fully known about how to move forward. And this is going to be like one of those trial by error type of things. I know, um, and if I can uh, just ask um, Chris to share a few words, because Chris has been going full steam ahead on this for the past three days. In fact, um, for as long as I've known him at PS78, he's been really trying to, uh, without even knowing, prepare us for this kind of thing. So Chris, if you can just share a little bit about the benefits of remote learning and how resources can help students while Caitlin gets um, ready. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Uh, so a lot of my experience has come from several different trainings uh, as well as experiences over the years. Um, recent, most recently, the Department of Education sent out a couple of different webinars for uh, some of the tech uh, folks of the DOE called Rapid Transition to Online Learning. So there's a lot that you can do with online learning. It's not necessarily taking over for the classroom, making the parents responsible to make sure that the students are logging in. Uh, however, it can be an expansion to the classroom. So there are so many platforms. Google, Google Classroom is one of them. Microsoft has Microsoft Teams. Um, Class Dojo has uh, behavior and uh, inspirational videos and um a whole bunch of resources uh, that pretty much take what the teachers do in a classroom and just helps push them through to their home life. Yeah. Um, so Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams is great. Uh, it pretty much can take everything that us as educators do in a classroom and brings it to the house. So it makes the staff members more access, easily accessible uh, via email, uh, web conferences like we're on now, um, uh, chat group uh, for both the students as well as the parents. Um, yeah. I know in my experience and I know in Mr. Harrison's experience, sometimes getting in touch with a parent can be a challenge uh, whether they're at work when we're at work or they're working after when we're off and we're able to assist that way. Um, Google Classroom, Class Dojo, and Microsoft Teams gives that availability for both the educator as well as a parent. It also gives the students an outlet to reach out to the teacher in a private setting to say, hey, I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. And this is something that can be done outside, like outside of remote learning. This is something that we can use daily in um, in educating our students. And it's not something to be afraid of, um, but it is something that we can actually use as an additional resource. Yeah. Um, now, Tanisha, I know that um, on on the the leadership level, UFT and, and things like that, you guys have been. Um, trying to put at ease parents and teachers alike. Uh, what what has been done from the UT, UFT level to get parents and teachers working together to uh, make sure that we provide the best educational experience despite the circumstances to our students? One of the things that we have done is made sure that we um, keep everyone informed and um, prepared. We we knew, um, when I say we, I mean um, United Federation of Teachers um, became aware very early that, um, or it was our opinion very early that keeping schools open was a public um, health issue. Um, and so we galvanized and used our collective voice to um, create a campaign to get the schools to close. Um, and we did that knowing that um, we would enter into some uncertainty, but that we felt as though um, keeping the schools open would be detrimental to the greater society. Um, so basically, before we started to make those um, suggestions, we knew that 
we might be facing something that was, um, you know, such a large scale that there would be a lot of of issues. And so um, basically taking on the understanding for the greater good, because keeping schools open um, was, gonna, you know, was not even an option. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of, and, and one of the things that um, this crisis brought about was that there's certainly a digital divide when it comes to um, what our students have access to. And we've been doing a lot of work um, around equity and access for students. Um, and so what we definitely pushed for was to make sure that students had access because of course um, you can't do remote learning without um, internet, without Wi-Fi, without devices. Um, one of the things that we had um, brought out during the early part of the school year was that we had an extreme amount of students that were and so when students don't have even the basic um, necessities like housing, it's pretty hard to um, it's pretty hard to expect them to engage in online learning. I have to say that the, the entire system um, from like all levels, at all levels, phenomenal in making sure that yes, um, I am not just an educator, I'm a, a parent as well. And, um, yeah. you know, the schools are, the schools have definitely um, been, been regularly communicating with us even prior to this crisis um, and about for my um, youngest child school, which is um, a high school where they'll be giving out uh, devices from 7.30 in the morning to one in the exits. And, you know, it's basically just show up um, and you get a device you have to have a, um, you know, permission slip and all that stuff, but um, nobody's being left behind in, in this work. And it's like all hands on decks. People have been extraordinarily, um, you know, patient and, and, you know, of course we know that there's varying levels of, of technology experience, even among staff. So um, the, I, I, I can only, like, I think, you know, I'm not even emotional at this point because we, we're so tired, but um, it just the, the seeing how hard people were working and, and, and what they were willing to learn and, and do in just three days, it's truly amazing. And, you know, everybody should be very proud of themselves. And, um, you know, and, and just, you know, it's, it's uncertain times, but take a moment to, to, to it reflect on what we've been able to achieve in these last three days. Yeah. And I think um, uh, it does show that the resiliency of parents, uh, teachers, and um, some people may not appreciate uh, the mayor of New York City, but I, I will give him this. Uh, he, he, I don't think he, um, um, I don't think he slighted the students uh, when, in New York City when it comes to this. Um, it took him a long time to make this decision, but now in hindsight, he wanted to make sure that every student had what they needed to be successful. So I'll give him that. That's the way it seems, and I'll give him that. Um, but uh, um, I that um, the chancellor of New York City and the, the mayor did a pretty decent job making sure that all the students have what they needed. I know in our school, we had a, a line out the door with parents who were coming to school who were picking up devices for free so that their students could be prepared for next week to start remote learning. I know also as a teacher that, and if you're a parent watching this, this will give you a little bit of insight of what we've been doing. We spent the past three days the past three days, creating Google Classrooms and being on Class Dojo, reaching out to every single parent in our schools to make sure that our students have what they need to be successful from now until at least April 20th, possibly longer. So um, this is a really a joint effort from everybody from the school kitchen staff, because if it wasn't for them, our students wouldn't have meals for breakfast and lunch. Everybody's involved in this. We have a lot of stakeholders in here in this making sure that our students are successful 
in this next uh, next couple of months coming up. And um, and when we were concerned about our students' health, that's first and foremost. Um, but we also want to make sure that while we are practicing social distancing and um, the schools are closed, that our students still have what they need to become successful educationally. Um, but uh, if you guys want, we would like to open up the floor for some comments, whether you be on Get Vocal, Facebook, or YouTube. I know there's a few people on YouTube watching. Uh, thank you guys so much. And if you guys have any questions, simply type your question in in the comment section, and we'll be able to answer whatever questions you guys may have. Um, we are having some technical difficulties with Caitlin, um, and I'm hoping that we able to we're able to to get this going because she has a lot of great um, tips and tools and resources. Uh, to share with you guys. And also, um, Chris, if you know of any resources that you would like to share, um, please do so because that's what this is about, making sure that our parents and our teachers are fully prepared during this time. Um, and I think people are saying that the volume is gone. If you can't <laughs> hear me, uh, please, Chris, can you hear me? Yes, I can. If you can't, can hear, if can you can hear speak? us in the in the chats, please say yes. You can hear us so that we know for sure that it's working. Um, please let us know, uh, Chris. In the meantime, if you want to just grab the spot right above next to me, while Caitlin works this out. Oh no, she's back. Hopefully, it's working now. Reload. Oh, she got video now and sound. Yes. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> All kinds of technical issues. I want to see if I can share my screen if reloading that helped at all. So let's see if this yeah. works. If so not. Real, real quick, um, to, oh, it didn't work. Ah. Ah, <laughs> let's try it again. Uh, while, while, while we do that, uh, Dequisha Martin had a question. She says, I have four children but two laptops, which I'm fine, but how can I go about remote learning? Um, uh, can you can I ask you, Tanique, uh, Tequisha, what di school district are you in? Are you... Uh, in New York City, just if you can respond, maybe we can help you out with that. Um, while Caitlin gets that prepared, I had a um, Miss uh, Vega share some uh, resources. Uh, she's a teacher in Staten Island, and uh, she, uh, if you can, share those resources in the Facebook link. Um, while Caitlin does this, I'm going to be sharing some links also for you guys on Class Dojo so that you guys can um, read up on it. Uh, it just has some uh, reading material on how you can prepare your students, how teachers can prepare your students, and how um, admin can help with this next phase of remote learning. Um, but while we do that, Chris, would you mind sharing with them how uh, what we've been doing at PS78 and how Google Classroom is um, helping teachers prepare our students for remote learning? Uh, sure thing. So uh, one of the things that we've done over the past few days, uh, and myself, uh, Andre, uh, and all the other PS78 staff members who are part of the text team, uh, Miss Simon, who's on watching around on Facebook or YouTube, uh, as well as Mr. Josh, Mr. Modina, Mr. O, Elia Kuhn, um, all of us have been working nonstop for the last three days. Uh, Mr. Harrison stole the show with... Uh, being one of the instructional leads for a grade uh, to help his grade set up uh, while I did a lot of the back end work. Um, so a lot of Google Classroom is very simple and easy to use once it's set up. Um, but making a rapid transition uh, to online learning uh, can have its challenges. So um, what myself and all the other technician uh, techs uh, throughout the Department of Education, as well as uh, the Department of Information and Technology um, have been doing is the last few days we've been creating uh, email accounts for every student uh, throughout the city, creating domains uh, and countless other resources to uh, to be able to bring remote learning to make it available for the students. Uh, at PS70, we also um, gave out approximately 550 laptops uh, today alone um, to our students and their families so that they can accomplish uh, their remote learning. Um, some of the things that the teachers have done is uh, we've gone through creating a Google Classroom, uh, creating assignments, being able to schedule assignments so that 
the teachers can spend more time uh, interacting with the students one-on-one -on -one or as a group that in through Google Hangouts and Google Meets. Uh, we also have several chats uh, through Microsoft Teams for this, the staff members and the instructional leads to communicate across the platform so that we are all on the same page as a school because we are a community. Um, so we work in a community and the school itself is a community of its own. Um, I've worked with Andre for, uh, I can't even remember how many years I've worked at the building since it first started. Um, the bonds that you create with the staff members as well as the students, it's, we're doing this for them. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many resources I'm going to, I will try to post as many of them as I can in this chat as well as on Facebook. Uh, I will also send uh, Andre uh, a few different links for how-to videos for a parent, how-to videos for a student, uh, as well as how to for staff members, uh, for any of you guys who are in a position of an educational institute. Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams does not necessarily have to be an educational base. You can actually use this in businesses. Microsoft Teams was originally designed for Fortune 500 companies. We've taken that technology since and have incorporated it in such a way that we can bring it to the students and introduce them to the technology and the materials that they'll need for their future. Mm. Yeah. And what I find is that, um, and what I'm also encouraged about is that um, through the midst of this crisis, it's, a, it's sort of forcing us to be forward thinking when it comes to education and how we marry technology and the digital age with education today. Um, it, it sort of forces us to say, okay, now we're in a position to um, where we have to engage our students through remote learning. Um, and it's something that going forward, every teacher now will have some sort of experience in it and they can use it in the classroom and even outside of the classroom to help the students grow in that. Um, I do also want to say that, um, just to dispel a myth, that teachers won't be doing anything but staying home. Teachers have a, a, a full schedule, a full schedule where we are uh, teaching and, and researching and grading just like we would if we were in the classroom, except we're doing it remotely. Uh, so we will be available uh, during school hours for your students, if they have any questions for you parents, if you have any questions, just as if we was, if we were in the classroom. So, uh, mm -hmm. so if you guys were thinking that teachers aren't doing anything, um, I can, uh, uh, Chris can tell you, um, uh, our principal who's watching, uh, Ms. Contento could tell you that every teacher in our building will be fully working during school hours <laughs> during this, um, school closing. So let's get in to see if we have any questions. I think we lost Tanisha. She's trying to get back in. I'm um, going to ask her to try again. All right. Um, somebody did say that they were having challenges with accessing the, the internet from their computers. Um, my recommendation is that you contact whatever school that you got the device from to see if they can help you with that. Um, yeah, I received a laptop today, but won't connect to the internet. Might try to come by tomorrow. Um, and also Jessica Vega Brown, Ms. Vega Brown, she is going nuts in the chat room on Facebook, sharing with you guys tons of resources that you guys can use. So please make sure you guys access that. Yeah, you, you was going to say something, Chris? Uh, I was going to say uh, at, at PS78, we actually have a dedicated email uh, that is in the process of being forward set up to forward to uh, a few of us at 78 who have experienced uh, Andre being one of them, uh, and a few of all the staff members that are going to help with technology uh, problems with Google Classroom connections or technology equipment. Uh, that email address I will put in the chat. It is distance learning support at ps78r.org. Uh, anyone in the chat, if you do have a comment or a problem with Google, I may not be able to help you with your if you're not at PS78, but I 
myself and everyone else who's on the email chain can we'll do our best to help you get the issues resolved, whether it's on your side or the school side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, I think, Tanisha, you were saying something when you were cut off? I'm happy to hop in. Uh, apparently on Facebook Live, you can see my browser, so. I think she can hear us. All right. Um, so how, how in most cases, how it's going to go is that each class will run as if it was running on a regular um, period schedule. Uh, your students, if they have ELA uh, in the beginning of the day for the time, they'll be doing ELA for that time. Math for whatever time they usually do it. Um, and they'll also have uh, social studies, um, history, science, and things like that. So the day is going to continue to go on. We want to encourage all the parents to make sure that your students are uh, engaged. And if you're having challenges, we're here to help. So if you're having challenges with it, if you have any questions about the, the learning, um, that's why we're available during the day to help you. What we don't want to do is uh, is what, what's called, what we don't want to see happen is what's called um, uh, in the summertime, the summer slide, where that two months off, students aren't engaged in learning and they sort of slide back educationally or academically. We don't want that to happen. So if you have any questions at all, Reach out I've, to your teacher. Uh, is what, uh, what's cool. what we don't want to see happen. Let's call them. Uh, uh, the summertime, the summer slide. If you, if you can hear me, can you turn the volume off, down a little bit? Students are engaged in learning, and it's sort of like that. It's kind of weird hearing yourself back. It's kind of cool. I think you right? can mute other like, people I, by I, pressing their mic. So. Yeah, I could. All right. Oh, Caitlin, you're back? Uh, you know, I've been on here the whole time. I've had my browser up. Like, I swear yeah. I've been, like, ready to go, but nothing's showing to you guys. Oh, uh, man. Well, if it's not showing, I, but maybe, I would love to just chat a little bit and just tell people a few things. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Perfect. Okay. So I'm Caitlin with Class Dojo. Um, I have so many resources to share with you, but technology is not my friend today, apparently. So I'm going to tell you some links. Um, you can find us really easily. I'll make it really easy for you. If you go to classdojo.com slash remote learning, we have a whole landing page with every single resource you need to transition to a remote learning community. There you can find how you can get your whole school signed up, um, whether you, it's just you, the teacher, if you're a school leader, if you're a parent who is trying to understand how you're going to continue supporting your student as you do remote learning at home, we have tons of resources for you. Um, for parents, you're going to log in. You can help your student post to their portfolio or they can log in on their own. Um, one thing I really want to call out for teachers is if you are having your students, um, if you're using Class Dojo as your remote learning community, make sure to send home. There's individual printed QR codes and these will allow your student to log in on their own to their account and to upload photos, videos, files, they can journal, they can do drawings, they can take a picture, draw over it and add a voice note. Um, and you as a teacher can assign activities so that you can post an eight minute video lesson on your class story, which families and students can see. And then you can send out an activity that says, hey, practice this on your own. Show me how you did it. Tell me your math thinking, perhaps. Um, so there, Class Dojo right now is really set up to help you create this remote learning community. And as always, we're committed to being 100% free for schools, for families. There is an ex a, an extended part of um, the parent app called Beyond School. That is a paid version. You don't need it to connect with Class Dojo and your hey, child's teacher. teacher. Go ahead. Just a moment. So we had, I know in our school, we had a um, uh, difficulty signing up a parent or a student's with uh, one parent that had multiple students in the in the school, okay, and was asking them to pay uh, to sign up more than one child. No, so you can sign up as many children as you want to. Um, it sounds like a little bit of user confusion. There, there is the part called Beyond School. This is an uh, an extra part of the app for parents where you can find bedtime stories, um, routines, other aspects that are really good to help parents, you know, cultivate this. Um, you know, uh, help their students at home. Um, but that is entirely optional. Um, right now, you can join Beyond School as a parent and uh, to, and start with a free trial if you want to give that a try, especially going from, you know, your kids, are, you're sending your kids to school. Now you are school. Um, so it might be worth giving that a look if you'd like to. 
Um, easy to find more information on that by going to classdojo.com slash beyond school. We also have, if you're a teacher, um, we have our own Class Dojo Teacher Facebook community. So if you go to Facebook and you search Class Dojo Teachers, um, there is a community of teachers from around the world who are asking questions, who are sharing lesson plans, who are helping one another. Um, it's a really great resource if you're new to Class Dojo. Um, because right now our support, we have tons of emails coming in, a small, very dedicated team who's working to get through those. But if you join the Facebook community, you're going to get immediate responses from other teachers. Um, if you're like, what read aloud should I do to go with, you know, um, um, this social emotional topic? And you have someone go, oh, you should read Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hankies. And then you're going to get 20 other comments with different books. Um, so that's a great, another really good resource. Um, we are hosting... Uh, webinars tomorrow. We have a webinar for school leaders. If you are a school leader and would like more information, if you'd like, you know, a more in depth, I have slides and things. Um, <laughs> if you'd like a more in depth conversation around Class Dojo and creating a remote learning community, please join me. Um, you can just in Google, you can search Class Dojo Remote Learning School Leader Webinar, and it'll show up in Eventbrite. Um, so you can join me there. Um, or join me in the Facebook community. And really, we're here to support you. The team really just wants to help teachers however we can. Okay. That's so, my quick spiel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for parents with multiple students, so what I did was, what I found successful for me, because um, I've had some challenges signing up parents through telephone numbers and email. Mm -hmm. When I put out the, the um, sign up printouts that has the student's class code and it individual codes that is the most successful way i found to sign parents up right on the spot where they download the app and we yeah. give them that code and they sign up you can also um, invite them by email and by phone number within the app if you log on web app. and you like go to connect families at the top there's a space where you can type in emails or phone numbers to invite families to connect to their child yeah there's a teacher on youtube that says uh, she was a teacher trying to help set the parent up is there a dojo video to show parents how to be a part of more than one classroom or yep. can a school leader purchase it in this time of hardship? So you, and you were saying that it it's, it's free. free. You do not have free. to pay for a thing. The entire school can sign up. You can all be con connected. There's a school story, which is like this private feed for your entire school. Any family member, teacher can view this school story. So you can post school wide announcements and see how many parents viewed it. You can message all of your families. Tran there's automatic translation over 30 languages. That means no matter what language anyone speaks, everyone's involved and in the know. Um, mm -hmm. And again, yeah, totally free. And because we really just want to support teachers. I mean, a lot of us are former teachers um, and just kind of believe in this idea that together we can, you know, even in the face of all this not so great stuff, we can come together and still make education amazing. Good. So um, how do you guys think that this can be used going forward um, after the uh, this uh, pandemic? Well, after it, it's the, 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 after we're able to go back into schools and um, be able to engage in learning the way we are accustomed to, how can we keep this going? And who is that cute little one right there? <laughs> oh, <there> she's, <laughs> we're on <laughs> Um, well, I know with in terms of like using remote learning and moving into when we do eventually go back to our classrooms, I think what's important is that you're building these remote relationships as well. I think a lot right now is focused on remote learning and remote remote teaching, but mm -hmm. you're creating these relationships with students and families. And I think this is a really good opportunity for families to feel a part of the education experience and to know that we are all a team for their kiddos. So as we go back to schools eventually, um, I think you know, hopefully we take with us this new view of what school is and how together with support at home, with support at school, we can give students a much more robust education, um, yeah. much more personalized, individualized education as well. Okay. I also I know, um, feel that um, this is the first step to showing parents firsthand what teachers go through on a daily basis to create lessons to produce the lessons, to, to teach them and to show the steps of how we continue education, that it doesn't just stop in the classroom. It could go further in 
life. It could go into the after schools, so the evening, the outside programs. It, this is just a stepping stone of the educational process. Right now, you're really showing families what what you've been up to. And it's a great opportunity to actually teach families how to teach their students. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a teacher, you know, you'd have the parent who you're telling, you know, I want the kids to sound everything out and really work hard. And then you get a little view into their lives and you see the parents just kind of telling them the word as they read. You know, this is a really great opportunity for us to share things like questioning techniques and other, you know, things that we've learned as teachers to help students in the classroom. This is a great opportunity to share that with families, to share growth mindset um, and allow families to learn that at home so that, yeah, we're again, creating that more robust teaching experience for kiddos. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, to um, see if I can get Tanisha into the conversation. Um, uh, Cause you know, some teachers are, are very concerned about this and um, on a, on a, May have some complaints, right? But um, I wanted to see uh, Tanisha's okay, viewpoint. I, on, I, on I'm it. having such technical difficulty, um, but I see that my mic is back on, so I have no idea what you asked me. But we are are um, communicating on Messenger, so um, you yeah. asked me if I could share um, uh, how this benefits teachers. Um, and I and I what I'd like to say is that. Um, one of the things that we're experiencing right now is like technical difficulties. <laughs> and um, I think what is resonating um, with me right now is that um, everyone can, can pretty much be um, confident that there is no expectation here to be uh, perfect. And we all know that technology sometimes like throws us for a loop. And what we should be confident in is that our um, we're putting our best foot forward, and um, whatever we do, um, it's it's a, an amazing effort that we have engaged in, and everybody should just be peaceful. Like I have spoken to so many people who were very um, anxious about all of this, and um, you know, I just think that we should just take a deep breath and be really proud of ourselves for what we have done. Um, but to speak to your, um, to speak to your question about the benefit for teachers, um, just, just the, and, and again, I want to bring in the, that, the fact that I um, am a parent as well. And um, my experience with classroom dojo was, um, has been absolutely phenomenal. It's literally like bringing, um, we talk a lot about, the um you know the the connection between families you know the classroom um and home um school home and and that connection and it's you know it's the parent and the it's the teacher and it's the student that's why i was realizing this yep. triangle but i'm only triangle. saying two things it's like what like, like this school it's the student right so it's the student the the the, the family and and the school or the the educator in the classroom, the students, and the parent. And um, Classroom Dojo is, is amazing. And, and the way it brings you into the classroom and it makes you part of your child's experience. And, um, you know, again, we, we know that there's a digital divide and we can use technology like this to bring students, um, to bring them up to catch them up and to make uh, families uh, a part of their education. One of the things that, like I have always been a working mom. I think um, like literally I I have never not worked while parenting. So, um, and, and we talk about parent engagement and how to bring families into the classroom. And I, even in a small scale, um, when I worked in um, early childhood, I would record parents uh, reading to reading stories. So, like you can buy those read alouds, um, and they cost the book in the in the cassette. At the time, it was cassette. Talk about technology. <laughs> we didn't even have. Uh, listen, I'll take it back to the record player. I can do that as well. Um, <laughs> we, there were times where you had, if you if you remember, you had the record in the in the in the book. Um, so. 
uh, so you had the cassette where the student could could uh, listen to a recording of a book. And, um, you know, one of the things that I would do to engage families and bring them into the classroom, because you have the those read aloud days where the parents come in and and um, a lot of our families are working families and they wouldn't be able to take the day off. And so um, having a parent read the book and it being that parent's voice um, and instead of having the um, audio uh, that the publisher used, you could um, use the parent voice and that would be very big for the student because yeah. like my mom is reading a book in the book area like you, you and you yeah. know do that home. that's my mom so um this is yeah, a, a classroom that. dojo does things like that where it connects families like you can be at work i mean you know a lot of times it was like you know did you do your homework or like did you do that assignment but but being able to connect with with um with the classroom when, when you're not able to physically be there is such a big thing. And, and we've had to um, really redefine what par parent engagement used to be the parent who was on the PTA um, that was at the schools um, conducting the bake sale. And that's just not feasible anymore. Like during this crisis to me really has brought out the fact that um, families are forced to have uh, multiple family incomes. And I, I, I say multiple instead of two family income because um, many of our families, not only both, uh, if they're, you know, with when there's multiple people in the household, not just that everyone has a job, but most of them have two jobs. So, yeah. you know, they're not just working, they're working multiple jobs. So you have multiple incomes in one household. And so people are not going to be able to come up to the school. So having this digital connection to the school community is very beneficial to teachers because, um, you know, it connects the, it, it connects families. Um, it also expands, like, um, we talk, we always talk a lot about, um, and you know, I, there we have a range of students and and their abilities, um, not abilities, but their experience in the world. Um, um, right now, I'm thinking about you know some of the students that I've had experience with, and and they have limited access to travel. Um, you know, bringing digital resources into the classroom helps us bring the entire world. Like it's yes. not called the World Wide Web for nothing. Right. And so now we're in places that we've never been. You can you can literally be um, connecting with classrooms in other parts of the world um, so that students are having experiences that will last them a lifetime. So um, it's like we were thrown into this. We we definitely have found that um, that we weren't prepared. I mean, that, I mean, just to be honest, like. Um, no one was prepared to go completely remote in three days. But what we are going to take away from this, like sometimes you have to force yourself, like what do they call it? Jump in the deep end of the pool. Um, you jump in and now we'll never unknow what we know. So we are going to be teaching in a different way now. And and, and it's, it can, the unknown is scary sometimes, but it, it it's it literally expanding. And I, and I have to tell you the... I, because I am a mom of, of three, um, a, um, a twenty, soon to be twenty-five year old, uh, a nineteen year old, and a fifteen year old, um, they really know that we're behind. Like they know that we're behind them. They they are digital, a hundred percent digital. Yep. And when they're in the classroom and we don't know what we're doing, they know it, um, and they clown us. Um, we. <laughs> I've laughed at them, but you know, it is what it is. So um, it's, 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 we're here, we're catching up. Um, they're going to help us. But it's the funny part is um, they know a lot more than we do. It's, it's great because we've had high school students graduate out and get um, high paying jobs at, at places like Google. Um, so, you know, um, technology is not anything that we need to be afraid of. Um, we definitely want to um, make sure that we stay, you know, the professional learning is there. It's phenomenal to hear that there are free resources that people can, because we certainly don't want to engage in creating a achievement gap because people have access to things that other people don't. 
Um, but I, I, I think, honestly, Andre, to answer your question, I think that the benefit is limitless. Um, and so it, 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 it really is unknown how far we can go with um, what, we're, what we're experiencing now. Um, okay. Mr. Brown, what's going on? We miss you at PS78. Um, but that's a lot of great information. And this is um, somebody that's, um, although not no longer in the classroom, she's also a parent, uh, an experienced educator. And she is fighting on behalf of teachers, not just teachers, but people in the community as well. So this is a, a great resource for um, all of us to use to encourage learning from home. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to take advantage of this. And, and yes, we're in uncertain times and we're um, going through uncharted waters. But it's not something that we uh, need to be afraid of. It's something that we need to to face head on, uh, educate ourselves about so that we can move forward, not because we want more work on us, but because we want to be, give our students the best that they can get, what they deserve. Um, Caitlin, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, although things didn't work out the way we have planned, uh, Class Dojo is an amazing resource. Um, that's one of the first things I implemented in my classroom when... I became a teacher. Uh, that was actually the first thing. I, everything was class from the, the very beginning. And now um, Class Dojo uh, it allows people to record from a laptop or a computer yep. using a webcam, which wasn't the case before. No. So that's a also added addition. So Class Dojo is also evolving with uh, the times and with the needs of parents and teachers. So Absolutely. thank you so much for the, the class dojo community, everything that you guys have been doing, providing this free, free resource to all of us for us to use. Um, and uh, also I wanted to thank Chris for coming on. Chris is extremely knowledgeable on a lot of uh, technology that helps support teachers and parents alike. Um, he has uh, pretty much single, almost single-handedly, uh, no, if not single-handedly provided emails for every student and every teacher in our school to get connected to uh, Google Classroom, supported every teacher in our building to uh, create a Google Classroom account, um, set up Google Classrooms, and get us prepared to uh, remotely teach our students. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, everyone's hard work and, and Tanisha, who was continually on the grind and not for herself, but for everybody else, whether it's fighting on behalf of teachers with the UFT, um, uh, representing parents as a parent and educator, um, and uh, the countless work she does in the community with um, everything. So we really appreciate you guys. Um, this is a team effort, and we can't do this alone. And uh, and I want to speak to my fellow teachers out there. If you are concerned about uh, this these next couple of weeks and you need any assistance at all, shoot me an inbox. I'll make myself available as much as I can. I am a single father with three kids and I'm teaching and remotely teaching. So I would, I will uh, try my best to be as much of a support as I can. Um, and, and, and on that note, let's all help each other. Let's all be there for one another. Okay. So that um, together we can get through this together. We can uh, achieve and together we can make sure our students have what they need to achieve as well. And, uh, and all the administration that's, that's watching. Thank you so much for all the hard work that you guys do. Um, we're going to close it out now. Um, Caitlin, do you have any closing remarks that you would like to share? No, I would just say make sure to check out classdojo.com slash remote learning. Make sure to join us in the Class Dojo Teacher Facebook community because there are so many resources and people like you there who can help support one another and share ideas and answer questions. And if you need a lesson, someone's there for you. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, we're all in this together. So however we can help, let us know. Our team is. How can they reach you? If they, they, so they, yeah. So if you want to reach support or support emails, hello at classdojo.com. But me, if you want to reach me, yeah. um, I am the admin for all the Facebook communities. So if you join those Facebook communities, you will see my icon. Add me as a friend. Um, that way you can direct message me. It's the fastest way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm around. I'm here. I'm here to help however I can. So. <laughs> Okay. And um, Chris, before I ask you, um, there's a question. Um, I have a question. The teachers are going to be able to interact live with the kids according to the schedule they gave. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know how every school is doing it, how every district is doing it, but a lot of, 
lot of districts uh, are allowing or are, will be um, having teachers interact live with students. Um, teachers will be available during normal teaching um, um, school hours for the students. So you should be able to reach your teacher uh, through any any way they have set up already for you to reach them, whether it's email, um, live chat, um, if they gave you a, a telephone number to reach them at, you should be able to reach them during school hours. All right. And, uh, and Chris, if you have any closing remarks. I do want to say uh, I will be available. Uh, I also will be having a open uh, conference call uh, Monday through Friday uh, during normal school hours. Uh, email. Uh, I will send uh, Andre all the information to share out to the viewers. Uh, anyone can join. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone from the public, 78, it's, uh, public school 78 community. If you're a parent, you have a question. You, you have a student that has a question, I'm more than willing to re be available. Uh, I will most likely have a Google Hangout set up or a Microsoft Teams call in. Uh, with that, you can call in via phone, uh, tablet, computer, uh, or just text message chat. Uh, so myself, uh, Andre is available with all his students and parents and everyone else. Uh, I will f forward my information out to Andre, and he could share it out to anyone. If you guys ever have any questions, feel free to send it, send us, send an email, and we'll help you as best as we can. Okay, and Tanisha, uh, do you have any closing remarks that you would like to share? I'm not sure if she can. Hear. I think there's a, a slight delay. So let's see if I can get her on. Let me hit her. Give me one second, guys. There she goes. Yes. Um. Yes. There's a delay. I'm. I'm actually watching. I. I don't know. I. Yeah. I can. I can see us on Facebook Live, but I can't. Um. It's. It's like about. It's probably like a minute behind. But anyway. Um. Closing remarks. I just. I just want to say that everybody is absolutely positively amazing. I want you all to um, not be hard on yourself and and know that everybody sees how hard you're working. You're doing the absolute best that you can. Um, you know, we are always available to hear your concerns. It sounds like, um, it, not it sounds like, there are so many people that have offered themselves to get us through this. Um, this, what we are doing is our work there's still a major crisis out in the world. So when we leave this space, and I, I don't, I cannot speak for all of you, but I know that sometimes um, when we're occupied with this, it kind of like we, it, we lose ourselves um, and what's really going on out outside. And, and that's one of the great things about education. I know that for myself and my personal life, whenever I was going through something rough, um, like it all melted away when I walked into the school building. And I just wanted everyone to really like, like to be easy on yourselves and enjoy the job yeah. that you have. Like you are there, there, you know, there's going to be students who remember you forever for the effort that you put in, um, in these next few weeks, um, you'll be etched in their hearts and their minds forever and families and, and, you know, just like our first responders and, um, you know, the medical staff that is given tirelessly, you know, it's, it's, it's the educators that show up for our kids and we're the, we're the consistent thing for them. And I just, I just don't want anyone to be upset, um, doing this because you, you know, you're, you're doing your best and you don't have to feel pressured to be perfect at all. And, you know, um, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, be upset or afraid or scared. Um, we're all in the same boat, and um, you know we're all just we're just trying to get through this together. And so I just want everybody to just like breathe and love the job that you have been chosen to do because schools don't run without us, and we have been called on to bring to be you know these kids. Some of them. We're the best thing in their lives. And the fact that we have the ability to show up for them still is amazing. So, you know, everybody just um, be kind to yourselves. Uh, you're doing an amazing job. 
Thank you. Thank you. I do want to shout out Miss uh, Vega Brown, Jessica, who's been in the chat, um, like spitting out all the, the links and resources for parents and teachers. I really appreciate you doing that for us. And um, also, I'll be uh, remiss not to shout out um, Miss Contento, our principal from PS78, who was watching today as well, and um, uh, the admin at PS78, um, uh, Miss uh, Jacobson and Mr. O. Thank you guys so much for your leadership and for allowing our teachers and myself and Mr. Chris to smoothly transition or as, smooth, as smoothly as we could transition into remote learning. All right. So good night, everybody. Again, if you have any questions, please connect with Caitlin on Facebook. Um, and I'll be sharing the links for uh, um, Mr. Chris's um, uh, weekly, uh, daily um, webinar uh, so that you guys have access to that as well. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to get through this together. And Tanisha for helping out uh, and giving us her insight. Thank you so much. We're going to get through this together. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of excited, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Not that I wanted this to happen, but when I heard that we were going into remote learning, I sort of lit up. I was like, yes, I can get rid of the paper because <laughs> I'm not a paper guy. I love computer stuff. Um, but um, I've never done this either. So um, I'm sort of excited about this this challenge that we're about to face, uh, but also uh, everything that we're about to learn together uh, about this as well. So let's look at it with that kind of mindset. Uh, what can we learn from this and how we can move forward and use this in the future as we move closer and closer to uh, a, a digital world? All right. So everybody have a good night. Um, teachers, you guys have the day off tomorrow in uh, New York City. Enjoy it. Rest up because when it come, comes Monday, we're back to work. All right, everybody have a good night. Uh, be safe. Uh, practice social um, distancing to keep you safe and your loved ones safe. And uh, until we meet again, uh, have a good night.